And welcome back. Tom Harmon here with you. Six minutes past the hour. And uh, on the line with me is George Landreth. He, uh, he is uh, the president of Frontiers of Freedom. FF.org is the website. You can tweet him at G Landreth, L-A-N-D-R-I-T-H, or at F-O-F underscore Liberty. George, welcome back to the program. It's been a while. Absolutely. It's good to be with you, Tom. Thank you. So uh, you're on a tear here about how we need to destroy the U.S. Postal Service, the brainchild of Ben Franklin, and turn it over to uh, what, UPS, FedEx, highest bidder or something like that? No, actually, I'm. Uh, my concern is that the Postal Service, because it's not managed very well, is going to do that to itself. I actually see the Postal Service as an important uh entity uh, as an ongoing entity. It doesn't necessarily need to do all the things it's currently doing, but I think first-class mail uh, is something that's important and we need to have around for. Unfortunately, it's always trying to get outside of that. And um, Then why not, you know, why not call for an end to this uh, 10-year-long, $5 billion a year poison pill that Republicans inserted into the, in, into the um, uh, Postal Service reauthorization or uh, reform bill in 2006 during the Bush administration that funds the health retirement benefits of postal retirees 75 years from now, that, that forces the post office to set aside $5 billion a year for 10 years, $50 billion for people who are not yet even born. It's never been done in any business or any government ever in the history of the world. This was purely a poison pill. And, and you'll recall, George, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure you do, that back in 2005, the post office was showing a good solid profit, so much so that they were, because they have the largest fleet in the United States, they were talking about as much as a quarter to a third of that fleet being converted to electric, which would have given a huge boost to the electric industry, which made the Koch brothers crazy, you know, the whole fossil fuel thing. And, and, and also, you know, and they were talking about solarizing their facilities and things like that so that they could charge these things. And then secondly, of course, the post office is the largest unionized employer in the United States. So I know Republicans, you know, wanted to destroy the post office forever. Um, why don't we just, you know, uh, roll back that, that, that crazy 2006 piece of legislation? Well, I don't know, um, to be honest with you, how crazy it is, but I do know that there's several things that they do that make it hard to be profitable. They, for example, when they ship things from, like if I want to buy a cable for my computer, if I buy it from a, a supplier across town and have them ship it to me, it'll cost me 10, 15 bucks in shipping. If I ship it from China, it'll cost me like 98 cents, 94 cents. So the bottom line is that doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it hurts American businesses. It hurts the post office. Um, and then you have questions of um, they, they have all these pilot programs where they want to deliver groceries and teddy bears and chocolates and big urban areas. And my sense of it is, is they, they have a, a, a monopoly on first-class mail, and that's the area they do the best on. If you look at their numbers, they make money in first-class mail, but they lose money radically on all this other stuff they're doing. So my view is get back to first-class mail, do that well. That's what we but need. If you take that's what the mandate was for. It's, and as you said, that's why Benjamin Franklin created the post office in the first place. Yeah. Uh, well, if you take Not out that $5 billion a year, year let's go. if you take out that $5 billion a year burden, um, as Senator Sanders has proposed doing year after year after year. Um, uh, you eliminate the problem, number one. And number two, you said the post office is not making money. Um, when, when did government have to make money? Well, I mean, what, does, the does, 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 does the Defense Department make a, money? It's, it's over 50 percent of our entire budget. It, it, it should break even, I guess, is the point. The post so you want the Defense Department to break even? No, the Postal Service, because the Postal Service sells stamps, and it is, um, it's, a, it's, not, it, it's not truly and entirely a governmental function. I mean, it's, 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 it's somewhat... Sure it is. It's in the Constitution. So, it's Article 1, Section 8. I, I, I don't disagree with that, but it's, it, it, I'm not expecting it to make money, but I'm expecting it not to lose money and come to the taxpayers periodically for bailout. Why not? You know, you've got the Department of Defense coming to us for a trillion dollars a year, and they can't even account for $2 trillion that's missing. And and you're saying that the post office has to make money or at least break even? Well, it's selling. Aren't there, aren't there selling government stamps. functions that are important? I mean, there's the, the you know, one of the reasons I'm why I'm not going to defend other departments of the government that are mismanaged either. But the difference, at least, there is the labor department's not selling something. I, I, there's no product that I can buy from the labor department. When I, I have to go buy stamps, 
So the expectation is the state, and they're given a, a, a legal monopoly. So if you can't make money when the government's giving you a legal monopoly, then you're not managed well. And that's the point. In the reason why. 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, they've lost $36 billion. Right. And they've got and they've got $50 billion right now in a trust fund for people who have not yet even been born uh, again because of this poison pill legislation in 2006 to prevent them from rolling out of a fleet of electric vehicles. Um, it, it, but but, you know, back to this 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 uh, point of the the the, the Postal Service. Um, there's a reason why if you ship something from Washington, D.C. to uh, Barrow, Alaska or to rural Alaska or to rural Montana or to rural Vermont, for that matter, I used to live we used to live at the end of a half mile long driveway in, a, in, in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere in in um, in Vermont, uh, Louise and I this was in 2000. And. Uh, if I got something shipped to me by FedEx or UPS, guess who brought it to my house? The post office. Why? Because FedEx and UPS hand those, it's called last mile delivery. They hand this stuff off to the post office because it's not profitable for them. The post office wasn't intended to be profitable. It was intended to provide this service of delivery goods and, and, and letters. That's uh, that's why I said we need a first class postal service. I'm not. Uh, when I was in Italy, they don't have a first class postal service. They deliver first class mail, but it's not first class. What I mean by that is, you know, I I I, I was there as a as a kind of college age kid, I, and in Italy at the time, at least, is the late seventies. You know, you couldn't get. George. Yes, sir. Yeah. George, your your phone just faded out. If you've got if you're talking to me on a cell phone, walk walk someplace else. <laughs> Are you still there? No? George, I'm I'm not hearing you. Yeah. I'm sorry. George, I'm I'm gonna hang up in the hopes that and and have uh and have Chris call you right back. So uh we're gonna try and call you right back. Um because we can't hear a word you're saying. And I think we've only got about two minutes left anyway, but uh, and so we both kind of said everything we have to say, but um, or give us a call, one or the other. And, and in fact, maybe that's George right there. Is that George, Chris? OK, cool. Hang on just a second here. OK, George, you're back on, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know sorry, if it's I was your a landline. I don't know what happened, but yeah. I'm sitting at my desk and okay, cool. somehow it, you, you lost me. But when I was in Italy, I, what I was saying was, is they ha they delivered first class mail, but they didn't have a first class service, and it didn't work very well. And I think it affects the way business is done in Italy. So I'm mm. a believer in having a, a post office that works, but I want it to work uh, in a way that isn't a drain on taxpayers, and in which it's not running around taking profits from a first class. Uh, monopoly that has, and then applying those profits and trying to deliver teddy bears in San Francisco and chocolates in New York City, and sell um, electronics at a kiosk in its, you know, th all these th kind of different schemes to to make money. When what I ought to do is focus on what it needs to do, and that's. We so need what's your that. what's your George? We have less than a minute. What's your specific suggestion? Well, my su suggestion is for the, post, for the post office to focus on what its mandate originally was and what it's always been. And that's, the, as you described, first-class mail de delivery everywhere in the United mm -hmm. States, done well, done properly, done timely. And, and the second, to the extent they get distracted from that to do other things, they become less effective. So I guess you're not a fan of postal banking? No. Even though we did it from 1911 to 1964 in this country, it worked just great. Um, I don't see any expertise in, the, on, in their part in, in banking. I, if, we, if we had a scandal and problems eight, ten, ten years ago with banking and lending and things, I, I, I just can't imagine the post office would handle that particularly well. I, just, okay. I don't see the expertise. George, George Landreth, uh, ff.org, G. Landreth, at G. Landreth. Hang on just a second. This is the Tom Hartman Program. I always steps on me, as you well know. George, thanks for dropping by today. Good talking. Absolutely. Always fun to talk with you, Tom. Thanks, George. Have a great one. We'll be back. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.